Hi, I'm Dr. Richard Boy. I have been doing bunion surgery now for nearly 30 years and I've actually done more bunion surgery than anybody in the world. The reason why is I created a painless bunion procedure. Every single one of my patients has to fill out a survey after surgery and we will post those surveys for the world to see, including the before and after photos. I encourage you to do the same after your surgeries so that you're telling your patients what your other patients have actually experienced and by that they will get a very good idea of what they are getting themselves into in terms of a recovery process or possibly a very painful recovery process. In my case, my patients are actually doing it painlessly. They have pretty much next to no pain. As a matter of fact, I do not prescribe any narcotic pain medication. Another thing that I do is I like my patients to actually talk to other patients that have already had the procedure done. And so what I'll do is I will schedule an initial consultation with a person who just recently had the procedure done. And then I just throw them in a room together and let them talk. And that way they can get to see firsthand what that patient went through, just had bunion surgery, and how they're doing currently. I have actually completed more bunion surgery than anybody in the world. As a matter of fact, I have patients who have flown to California from 47 different states currently. If you happen to Google best bunion surgeon in the world, which I'd like you to try to do, I show up first just below all of the advertisements. In other words, people who paid to be there. And that's for a reason. The reason is, is because I have done more bunion surgery than anybody else, and I really would like to find somebody who has results that are comparable. When it comes to my procedure relative to the lapoplasty, it's painless. As you know, the lapidus or lapoplasty procedures really reserved for very high first intermetatarsal angles, angles that are 18 degrees or larger. I'm going to show you my technique, or at least prove to you with at least 10 different sets of x-rays of very large first intermetatarsal angles, how those angles can be reduced to avoid the necessity of a first metatarsal kineoform joint fusion or any type of base procedure. The lapoplastic procedure involves reducing the intermetatarsal angle because of the fear of the inability or the fear of the recurrence of the deformity. The lapoplastic requires some eight screws and two plates in that surgical site and consequently the patient would be non-weight bearing for a significant period of time. The creator, from what I understand, of the lapoplasty internal fixation device has said he does not allow his patients to run for four months. As far as getting back to impact activities, it's usually around the three to four month mark after surgery. And as we all know, this procedure does, and most often does, create a tremendous amount of discomfort and pain for that patient. And with all of that hardware being inserted into their foot, there is a significant chance of that hardware needing to be removed out of their foot, which with that much hardware is an extensive surgery to remove. When it comes to my procedure relative to the lapoplasty, patients are bearing weight immediately on their foot. There's no need for a cast or crutches. They're actually driving their car the next day after surgery, even if it's the right foot. Patients are not on any type of narcotic pain medication. I do give them an anti-inflammatory to take as needed or not at all. The lapoplastic procedure involves reducing the intermetatarsal angle because of the fear of the inability or the fear of the recurrence of the deformity. In other words, the deformity may come back or you're not able to correct the deformity significantly unless you complete the first metatarsal kineoform joint fusion. With the procedure I've created, you will see that the first intermetatarsal angle is significantly reduced, that the alignment of the great toe relative to the first metatarsal, in other words, the hallux abductus angle, is reduced back to normal and stays there. And that all has to do with the soft tissue techniques more than it does the osteotomy. Now, I've designed the osteotomy to withstand internal pressure forces from weight-bearing surfaces so that the screw is simply compressing the bone together and the osteotomy and the retrograde force of the hallux itself maintains the alignment of the osteotomy. 
Once that bone has completed its healing cycle, let's say within three months, I allow my patients to have that screw removed very easily. The screw removal process simply involves inserting a 25 gauge needle through the skin down the cannulated portion of the screw, making a stab incision with a 64 beaver blade, removing that 25 gauge needle and simultaneously replacing it with an 045K wire which is then used as a guide pin to guide the cannulated screwdriver to the head of the screw and it's backed out without even seeing the screw. One stitch, a bandage, and they're on their way home. The following morning, they can remove all the bandages, place a band-aid over that spot, put their shoes and socks on, and walk as much as they wish. I think the laparoplasty procedure, if the heart were to be removed, we're talking several weeks of healing time with all of that deep fascia and all of that skin and subcutaneous tissue that has been disrupted to get all of that hardware out of there. And some significant pain medication, I'm sure. The hardware removal procedure that I do, it's painless. Patients do not take any type of pain medication. The procedure that I developed has evolved over the last three decades into what it is today. From the soft tissue correction to the way I handle the bone to the way I reposition tendons. I want to invite anybody who's interested in learning this technique that I've created to visit the surgery center and observe an actual case or possibly do it on a Zoom video where you're allowed to watch it from the comfort of your own home and ask questions and interact as the procedure is being performed. Thank you for watching this information video. Please reach out to us through social media to ask any questions and we'll be more than happy to answer them for you.